hey, future respiratory therapist, uh, I got something I want to do for you today, which seems to be an area of challenge for a lot of respiratory students, and I want to hopefully help clarify for you that today. Um, so what I'm talking about today is when we talk about the physical exam, what, what does palpation and percussion, what does it mean to you? And what does it tell you about your patient? And I'm just going to wing this. I don't really even know what direction this is going to take. So I'm just going to go with it. Okay. So first of all, we got to understand when we're talking about palpation, we're talking about putting our hands on the patient, having them say 99. And what we're feeling for is the vocal fremitus making its way out to the chest wall. Areas of increased fremitus will signify areas of increased density or areas of a solid media that will enhance the vibrations. When we say percussion, we're talking about tapping over the thoracic cavity and basically also identifying areas of increased density or decrease density. So I want to put that up here first of all so that we know what we're talking about. So when we say palpation, my daughter says hello by the way, we're talking about fremitus. When we say percussion, we're talking about resonance. Okay? So that's the first thing you have to t that's the first thing you have to understand is that when you talk about palpation you're talking about filling the vocal fremitus when you talk about percussion you're talking about tapping and you're listening for the difference in resonance okay and so I'm going to make two different sides here this is not a a line separating palpation from percussion this is a line separating increased density from decreased density so we're going to start with that increase Density versus decrease in density. Now, when we talk about density, we're talking about areas of more um, heavier, heavier areas, areas that are that are denser, areas that have more weight to them. Okay, and so we're talking about areas in the lungs that may be either filled with fluid or atelectatic. Um, those are the two big common ones when we talk about increase in density. When we talk about a decrease in density, we're talking about areas of air trapping. So I'm just going to write out here air trapping. I'm just going to write actually just air. Okay. And over here, I'm just going to write fluid. Does that work for everybody? So when we talk about areas of increased density, we're talking about areas that may be consolidated with fluid or lung tissue. And when we talk about a decrease in density, we're talking about areas that have an increase in air. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through the disease processes with you and talk about them with you. And, and, and hopefully this makes sense. Okay, if it doesn't, then leave me some comments. Let me know, hey, do this a different way because this didn't work. Okay, but I think it will. So if we talk about areas of the lungs that are more dense due to fluid or due to a collected area of lung tissue, which would be the case in atelectasis, then we're talking about areas of, we're talking about things that will cause a hyporesonant note. Okay, so increased density goes with hypo, and I'm just going to do it like this. A hypo resonant note. These areas also are, are, are consolidated with fluid or their compressed tissue. And when the patient says 99, and you have vocal or tactile fremitus at the at the thoracic cavity, you will have an increase in fremitus. Okay? 
So an increase in fermentus and a hypo-resonant note go with your disease processes that are associated with fluid or an increase in density such as atelectasis. Okay, I like to, I like to tell students that if you've ever seen a movie Up, uh, if you imagine all of those balloons, or if you just imagine a cluster of balloons, if you've never seen a movie Up, if you imagine a cluster of balloons and you pop all of them, what will happen? They will all fall and that, that balloon material will all come together. That is more dense than when all the balloons were full. Everybody agree? So, so that's what I'm talking about when I talk about an increased area of density. Now, when I talk about a decreased area of density, I'm talking about areas that are filled with air, which creates those areas, to, creates those, those areas of, of decreased density. And that's going to be cause a high per versus a high po. resonant note okay and they're also going to cause areas of decrease fremitus now you have to understand this air carries nothing so the vibrations when they hit these areas of increased air or decreased areas of density then the vibrations tend to go from this to this and they fade away as they reach the chest wall. So you'll have a decrease in fremitus in any of your disease processes that are associated with increased amounts of air. Okay. Now there, there's an exception to this and I'm going to talk about it that at the end. Okay. But right now, just know that fluid equals increased density, which gives you a hypo resonant note and increased fremitus. A decrease in density is associated with air. It'll give you a hyper resonant note and it'll give you a decrease in fremitus. Now let's talk diseases. Okay, so if we've got that situated, then we got to talk about diseases. So let's talk about our diseases that are associated with fluid or areas of consolidation. Okay, so the first one that comes up is pneumonia. Now I just put PNA because that's short for pneumonia, okay? Other ones would be pulmonary edema because that's obviously fluid leaking into the alveoli. Um, that would also be areas of <clears throat> atelectasis because while that's not fluid, that's also Go, while it's not fluid, it is going to be an area that causes increased density. So atelectasis. We're talking about your post-surgical patients. Look, if you're taking your test and it says patient is post-op for abdominal surgery, the answer is either atelectasis, hyporesonant note, increased fermentus, start an IS. That's <laughs> simple as that. Okay? Because... The abdominal surgery puts them at risk for developing what? Atelectasis. Okay. Now, there's a few more here. Um, ARDS. Pulmonary fibrosis. And then the last one I'm going to put on here is pleural Effusion. Now, forgive me for running out of room, but that's pleural effusion, okay? Pleural effusion is fluid where? In the pleural space. Is it going to create an area of increased density? Absolutely. Is it going to give you a hypo-resonant note? Absolutely. I'm going to stop right there. Now, when I come to this side, the list is much shorter because when we talk about diseases of increased air, then we're talking about our air trapping diseases, which for the most part brings us to emphysema, asthma, and any of your other C babes. So chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, or cystic fibrosis in conjunction with emphysema and asthma. 
Okay, those will give you an increased area of air, decrease your density, cause you to have a hyperresonant note, and a decrease in fremitus. Now, because these are bilateral diseases, then obviously your findings are going to be bilateral. Now, if you ever are told that you have unilateral hyperresonance and unilateral decreased fremitus, then now we're talking about A pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is typically a unilateral disease process. So bilateral hyper hyper resonancy or bilateral decreased fremitus, you're probably talking about one of your C babes. A unilateral hyper resonancy or a unilateral decreased fremitus, you're probably talking about a pneumothorax. I'll get more into that when I do the videos over specific disease processes. But for now, just keep that in mind, okay? Now, <clears throat> where are we? Where have we cut? Where where are we right now in this in this video? We understand that when we're talking about palpation, we're talking about fremitus. We talk about percussion. We're talking about resonance. Areas in the lungs that lead to an increase in density will give us a hypo resonant note and an increased area of fremitus. Areas associated with air will give us a decrease areas of density, which will give us a hyper resonant note and a decreased area of fremitus. The disease processes we're talking about, major disease processes. Increased density, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, atelectasis, ARDS, pulmonary fibrosis, and lastly here, pleural effusion. Areas of decreased density that will lead to a hyperresonant note and a decreased fermentus, emphysema, asthma. Why? Because they chronically air trap. Now, as, asthmatics don't chronically air trap. They air trap during acute asthmatic episodes, okay? But when they present, they're presenting with air trapping. Because why? They can't get air out because they're obstructive lung diseases. And then finally, a pneumothorax. Air in the pleural space will decrease the density in that region and cause you to have a hyperresonant note and a decrease in fremitus. Now, I told you a minute ago that pleural effusion was... The exception, and I tell you that because you have to understand this right here. If you're ever told that you have a high po resonant note, yet you have a decreased fremitus, then the disease process is pleural effusion. It's the exception to the rule. It's fluid-based, but it's fluid outside of the alveoli. It's in the pleural space. And so while it creates an area of increased density and causes a high po resonant note, it's actually the only disease that causes a high po resonant note with a decrease in fremitus. You see, the fluid actually acts like a pillow, or it acts like... Um, a barrier from the vibrations that are coming down the tracheobronchial tree and then they hit this area of fluid that's outside of this communicative area that these vibrations are continuing and when they hit that area they diminish rapidly so areas of fluid or consolidation cause increased density hyporesonant note Increase fermentus. Areas of air cause a decrease in density, which leads to a hyperresonant note, a decrease in fermentus. The exception to the rule is pleural effusion because the fluid is outside of the alveoli. It leads to a hyporesonant note 
with a decrease in fermentus, even though it's fluid. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you need me to clarify this, if you need me to do a plural effusion specifically just on this topic, um, if you need me to do this in a different manner, tell me what you think. Tell me what you need. I'll do it for you. Go be great. See you soon.